Welcome to my August 2018 Countdown to Retirement video. Every month I make a video as I count down to retirement in June 2019. Basically I go over what books I purchased and at the end of each month I do one last clip with what books I read and what movies I watched. It's kind of like a personal journal. If anybody you know, watches, great. If not, what can I do? Um, one thing is that in July I actually made two videos. One was like a special video for uh, along with a friend, kind of like a co-host for that one, um, who was visiting me. And then I made my regular July video also. But for some reason, YouTube took that video down and then put it back. But it doesn't show up in my channel. It'll show up if I do a video search, I could find it. But it's not showing up in my video feed, like what, what videos are mine that I made, it just disappeared from the page. It's been a few days, maybe it'll come back, I don't know, I don't know what happened, I don't know why they took it down. I sent an email in response to their message telling me that they took it down, and I just, cause I don't understand what rule I broke. It was just a basic book haul video. I mean, people make crazy videos on YouTube, what are they picking on my video for? It's harmless and inoffensive. The most you could say is it's boring. <laughs> um, but uh, So I don't know what happened. So hopefully this things will work out with this video. I hope I don't have to stop making these videos. I was, I've been doing this now for oh about 30 months, roughly, counting down. So it would be a shame to get cut off at the end here for some crazy reason. Okay, now that that's out of the way, the July video, again, is on YouTube. But it does not show up if you click to see all the videos I make. You'll see one for July that's a kind of a short one. Then there's another one that's like an hour and five minutes. And for some reason, as of right now, August 3rd, it's not showing up. But if you look up August 2018, um, excuse me, July 2018, Countdown to Retirement, book haul, two words, book haul, you should find it. Okay, so what did I get this week? I have four books here, and we'll go over them. This I found outside at Strand, Larry McMurtry, Telegraph Days, one dollar. Nice shape. I don't have that book, so it's a good purchase. This book here, the West, uh, the West of the Imagination, by William H. Gottsman and William N. Gottsman. I guess it's father and son. I have a newer version of this book. It's like an updated version. This is an older one. It was like in excellent shape. And I just thought, what the hell, I'd get the older version. It was $2. Then, this came... Oh, wait. Um, I'll show it again because it's a cool book. But this, this came last week. I think this is in my last video for, uh, for July. But here, I didn't put it away yet. Charles M. Russell, The Women in His Life and Art. Edited by Joan Carpenter Tricoli. So, this might be in my July video. If not, there it is. And then, this book here does not have a dust jacket. I don't know that it ever did. It's an art book, artist, a Western artist named Charles Shrevogel. He was popular in the early 1900s. And I have this book with the dust jacket. But this edition here was $30. I found it at Strand. And the reason why I purchased it, because I didn't really need another copy, is because when I opened it up, let me see if I can, give me one second here. You can see there's two, uh, it's signed twice there. It's signed by the author, James Horan, and it's signed by Ruth Shrevogel Carruthers, who is the daughter of the artist. And then, it may have been hard to read when I held up the book, but... It's limited to 249 copies, and this is copy number one. And this is the, the number first signed copy. And there's also four additional paintings, color paintings, at the beginning of the book that don't show up in the regular edition, which I have. So I figured, you know, it's signed by two people related to the book. Oh, excuse me. And... Uh, it's a limited edition. It's got some extra paintings in it. I'm a collector. I love this stuff. I'm just going to get it. And so that's that. That's it for this week, uh, what I purchased. And let me see. Did I miss anything? I don't think I missed anything. So let's see. Uh, next week, 
um, go to, I'll be going to Strand a few days, and then the week after that, we're going away for a week. So we'll be hitting the book thing in Baltimore twice, going past and then coming back home. And hopefully we'll get some good books there. That That's all free. If you're not familiar with the book thing in Baltimore, it's free books, as many as you want. But it's Thursday night, August 9th, and everyone's asleep, so I'm being quiet. Time for a book update video. A short one. We got back from vacation yesterday, Saturday, August 18th, and these are the books that I picked up on our trip. My wife and son picked up another maybe 10 to 12 books between them. Obviously, I went a little bit nuts. We went to the book thing in Baltimore, which is free books, and we also stopped at various bookstores in Virginia while we toured the state, some historic sites such as Colonial Williamsburg and the estates of Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. We had a great time. And let's get this book haul video underway. Okay, so let's get started with this book haul. Most of these books, there's about maybe 110 books roughly. Most of them were picked up at the book thing, probably 75, 80 of them at least. And the others I purchased at various bookstores in Virginia. Book thing is in Baltimore, Maryland. Free books if you haven't heard of it. Nice place to go. Okay, so in no particular order, um, and I'm not going to single out what I got at the book thing and what I didn't. It's uh, just going through the books. Um, Ombre by Elmore Leonard. And just a curiosity, this is from the book thing. They put a little stamp inside when you get books from them, so it shows you where you. Got the book, tells you you're not supposed to resell it because they don't want people going there, getting books for free and then profiting off of them, which is understandable. Um, All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Remark. It's in like brand new condition. The Oxbow Incident by Walter Van Tilburg Clark. Again, great shape. And then I got two books by James Welch, part Native American author. He passed away a few years ago. I picked up Winter in the Blood and The Indian Lawyer. I had these books, but they were free at the book thing. And it's nice to have extras, especially because I have so much room. No, I don't. Uh, the Revenant by Michael Punk or Punky which was made into a terrible movie, absolutely horrible movie. And by the way, I made a joke before about how much room I have here for books. This is a real problem now. I, I broke the bank here in terms of space. I have no idea how I'm going to put these books away. This is going to this is going to take me a few weeks maybe to figure this out, how to rearrange, where to put things. I just I don't know how I'm going to do it. This apartment is filled with books. Um, the Wisdom of Old Time Television, Common Sense and Uncommon Genius from the Golden Age of Television, compiled and edited by Chriswell Freeman. Cute little book. Raymond Chandler, The Big Sleep. This was a good find. David Seal's Sweet Medicine. It's a novel. Native Americans, hardcover. When I found this, I was this was at the book thing. I was really hoping to find the companion one, which is called Pow Wow Highway. Um, it's possible it was there. I don't know. I looked. I didn't see it. Maybe it was going to be put out at some point during the day if it was donated like this book was. Um, 
I was really wanted to find both of them in hardcover. That would have been very cool. But uh, this was a good find anyway. And it was free. The best Western stories. 22 stories from the West, including Jack Schaefer, who wrote one of my favorite books, Monty Walsh. Uh, other stories in here by Max Brand, Bret Hart, Jack London, and other authors. Guilty Parties, A Mystery Lover's Companion by Ian Usby. I had this book, but it was like brand new, and it's a really nice book. So when I saw it, I said, well, I'm just going to take it. The Gates of the Alamo by Stephen Harrigan. I have a hardcover copy of this book. My face keeps going off the side here. Let me maybe turn it like this. Um, I have a copy of this signed by the author. So I figured this if I'm going to read it, um, the hardcover. I also have a paperback. So I have a few copies. But anyway, it was hard to say no. It was in such nice shape. Jim Fergus is the author of this book, 1,000 White Women. There's another cover. To, uh, this is uh, the Journals of Mary of May Dodd. Um, it's a Western fiction. There's another cover to this book with the woman on the front that I'm looking for. Hopefully one day I find it cheap. Otherwise, I'm not going to get it. Just to have a different cover would be cool. Like I have room for that. Uh... Discovering America's Discovering American Past A Look at the Evidence Sixth Edition Volume One to 1877. This was at the book thing, it was like brand new. And there's articles in here, or I should say chapters in here about uh the first encounter um between the Spanish and uh, let's see here, between Cortez and Montezuma. So he was Aztec, I believe. Um, there's another chapter here on, there's quite a few, there's information here on the Boston Massacre, the evolution of the colonial Chesapeake Society, um, the first American party system, the Philadelphia Congressional Election of 1794, information on the removal of the Cherokees, and there's, there's more. So again, discovering American past. And it's set up pretty interesting. There's, it'll be like the like it'll start off with a chapter, so for instance, first encounters, the confrontation between Cortez and Montezuma. This is in 1519, 20, and 21. So it starts off with the problem, background, the method, the evidence, and then there's accounts, um, questions to consider. So it's kind of like each different uh, topic that they cover, they break it down. Kind of interesting. Um, this... I have, but it was free, uh, 1491 America Before Columbus. This is a National Geographic from 1991. It was brand new. They had boxes and boxes of National Geographic, and I wish I had time to go through them. This one also had a map in it, brand new, untouched. Um, they probably had some real nice treasures in those National Geographics to get, but I just I couldn't go through them. There were boxes and boxes of them. Uh, you could have spent all day just going through those. Then, um, this was something I got just as a reading copy. So there's no dust jacket. It's a book on Frederick Remington. It's called Frederick Remington Paintings, Drawings, and Sculpture in the Eamon Carter Museum and the Sid W. Richardson Foundation Collections by Peter Hesrick. And this will just be a nice reading copy. I, I have it. But I could keep this one out instead of on the shelf. And you know, when I get ready to read it, it'll just be sitting there. Um, okay, so now I'm going to pause and get the next batch of books. And we're back. Okay, again, in no particular order. This was a good find. I found this in a used bookstore. I think it was about $7. Uh, Reluctant Frontiersman, James Ross Larkin on the Santa Fe Trail, 1856-57. And, uh, edited and annotated by Barton H. Barber and a forward by Mark Simmons. And this I picked up because there's uh, several mentions of Cheyenne Indians in it. And I have, I've never heard of this book. It's put out by New Mexico, Un I guess, University Press. Let's see. 
Yeah, University of New Mexico Press, Albuquerque. I like the Cheyenne Indians, and this had some first-hand accounts and mentions of them. So I thought that was kind of a unique find for me. Um, Westwood to Oregon, this had, this is like a, kind of, I guess, maybe for a college study from like the 1960s, I guess. Um, it, it selected source materials for college research papers. And this is from 1959. Actually, uh, someone signed it, a name inside 1959, but it was printed 1958. And someone wrote their name in it from 1959, which I think is kind of, actually not their name. They wrote August 1959 when they, I guess when they purchased this. And the guy that purchased it, there's a stamp in here. His name is John Tottle, T-O-T-T-L-E, with a Washington, D.C. address. So it's kind of cool that someone had it back then and ends up at, at uh, some used bookstore. This wasn't at the book thing, although it certainly could have been. Um, there's some interesting stories in here excerpts of historic accounts and I do have this already but it's a rarity to find and I wanted to get another copy kind of went on a lot about that little book didn't I um, light a distant fire Lucia St. Clair Robson I wish I could have found this in a small paperback but uh, it was in you know overall generally good shape certainly a good reading copy this is about Osceola and the Seminole Indians Robson is a very good author, and uh, so I picked that up. And then, this is a history book, The Musket and the Cross, and it's by the author of Drums Along the Mohawk, Walter D. Edmonds. And this book was uh, from the book thing. It's a li it's an ex-library book. I could take this off. I haven't worked on it yet. That little sticker up there. Um... There's no, oh here, there's a library discard thing in the back. Um, well, actually not discard, but one of those old style cards that you would like you have to sign out the book. But the book's like, it's never been read. It looks, looks like no one ever took the book out, never touched. It's got the library jacket on it and for free, brilliant, I don't care. It, this is an awesome find. Okay. This was cool. Um, Robert Louis Stevenson. It's a hardcover book. It's got the, like the gold uh, plating around the pages. There's a nice picture on the front and back end papers. And there's basically in here seven novels. I'll tell you what they are. I'm sure you could all guess at least two of them if you know Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, Treasure Island, Prince Otto. Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Kidnap, The Black Arrow, The Master of Ballantrae, and David Balfour. There's an introduction by Michael Kramer, Ph.D. And this book is from 2011, Canterbury Classics. And this looks like unused. Great find. Best Little Stories from the American Revolution by C. Brian Kelly. I also have one, uh, The Wild West, by C. Brian Kelly also. I wonder what the C stands for. Could it be Chris or Charles? Um, James Paddy's West. The Dream and the Reality by Richard Batman. Can you imagine going through life with a name Batman as your last name? I'm sure he's heard every joke in the book about it. Um, so this is a book about uh, James Ohio Patty. He was a mountain man. He wrote a book back in, I don't know, 1830s, 40s. I don't remember exactly, but around then. And it may have, you know, uh, may contain a lot of uh, stories in there that aren't true or not true to him. Um, I never read the book, but this is uh, Batman... <laughs> He tries to, I guess, wade through Patty's story and find out what's real, what's not. Um, so, looks like an interesting book. I like the Mountain Man era. Era. Uh, the Campaign That Won America, The Story of Yorktown by Burke Davis. This I actually bought for 1095 at the Yorktown uh, National Historic Park or National Historic Site. I'm not sure what you would call it. Um, 
we did we went to Yorktown, listened to a talk by the Ranger. She was very, very, very good at what she was doing. Um, we had probably the best guide you can get there. Uh, she knew her stuff and had a good personality. Um, and she kind of reminded me of, if you're familiar with Northern Exposure, there was uh, Officer Samansky, Barbara Samansky from Northern Exposure. She was in a few episodes. Kind of reminded me of her. Um, very good talk. She recommended this book, and I picked it up. Yorktown was an interesting event in American history. Might not be in America without it. Um, this I picked up at the book thing. The Post Reader of Fantasy and Science Fiction. 20 Exciting Stories by Conrad Richter, Robert Heinlein, Philip Wiley, and others. Compiled by the editors of the Saturday Evening Post. This is in nice shape. Hopefully there's some good stories in there. And hopefully someday I get to read it. Um, I have a book by Charles Frazier called 13 Moons, I believe. I don't have Cold Mountain, but now I do. This book was from the book thing. It's brand new. It looks like it's not been read. It just has that stamp from the book thing inside. But otherwise, it's like brand new. Now, this I picked up in a bookstore. Uh, I think it was like around eight dollars and change. This was this was picked up at a store called Second and Charles. I'd never heard of it before. It's in Virginia. There may be stores elsewhere. I don't know, but there were a few in Virginia. We went to two of them, and this was I think eight seventy five in one of them, and it's like brand new. It's a great book. Um, I have it, but for eight seventy five, I was going to take it brand new. A Northern Cheyenne album, photographs by Thomas B. Marcus, edited by Margot Liberty, and commentary by John Woodenlegs. And uh, that's one of my problems. If I have a book and I see it, like a really great copy, I know it's a good book, I can't help but get it. So I wind up with multiple copies and I don't have room. And I really don't. But I just, I get them because I just I can't let it sit. I don't know why. It would just bug me. Um... This is a book I see a lot, but I've never gotten it. This was free. This was uh, at the book thing. Joseph Campbell, The Power of Myth. I always see it. I always start reading from it. It's interesting, and I just never shelled out the money for it. Um, but now I have. I probably would get, if I saw this in hardcover, like, like brand new, I'd probably get it. Um, Military History Quarterly. I like to get these magazines. They're in they're soft cover now, like a regular magazine, but they used to make them in hardcover. This is from nineteen ninety-eight. And it's interesting history articles inside. I have a whole collection of them. Uh, this book I have, but it was in great shape. Cavalry by edited by James Lawford. So there's different authors in here, and I guess he's the overall editor. And it's just like in mint condition. It looks like it's not been read. Uh, let's see here. Lots of text and pictures. So, and then this I also bought. I, I have it. Bought it in a store. It was fifteen dollars, which is like unheard of. Um, the only thing that could have been better would be like if I found it at the book thing for free. Uh, this is thirty years after an artist's memoir of the Civil War. Text and illustrations by Edwin Forbes. There were two of them in this particular bookstore in Virginia, and the one that was not in such great shape was more money. And I, it was like maybe seventeen or seventeen fifty, and this was fifteen dollars. And it's like brand new. And I saw that, and I said, you know what, that book's mine. And you know what, time to pause this and get the next batch of books. Okay, let's get back to this. Uh, this was a really fun trip. Okay, this is the beautiful cigar, the beautiful cigar, blah, blah, blah. the beautiful cigar girl, Mary Rogers, Edgar Allan Poe, and the Invention of Murder by Daniel Stashauer, award-winning author of Teller of Tales. I have this book. It was at the book thing. Free. It's brand new. How to get it? Got good reviews, so I have an extra copy. 
Um, the Kentucky Trace, a novel of the American Revolution by Harriet Simpson Arno, A-R-N-O-W. It already had like a library cover on it in great shape. A book about, I guess, the Kentucky frontier with Indian, Indian Wars or Indian Wars era. I know there's Indians in the book and I like reading about Indians. Okay. Um, this had very good reviews. I didn't know when I picked it up, but it was free at the book thing. Let's see, it's got there a little stamp in there. Um, All the Way to Berlin by James Magellus. And A Paratrooper at War in Europe is the subtitle. He's the 82nd Airborne's most decorated officer. It's in great shape. Uh, 1 to 10, I'd give it like a, like an 8. Really, not, really nothing wrong with it. Just a little crinkle here and there, but no big deal. It was free. James M. Cain, famous author. This is a compilation. It's got four of his complete novels, Unabridged, The Postman Always Rings Twice, Mildred Pierce, Double Indemnity, and Serenade. The Massacre by J John J. Vrooman, V-R-O-O-M-A-N. I'm sure this had a dust jacket, um, but even though this one doesn't, there's a cool art uh, illustration in here. And <clears throat> this is, again, called The Massacre. And this book is from, trying to see when this was published. Uh, it's from 1954 and it's also has a thing in here it says it's number 688 of 1000 copies for a first printing it says right in here they wrote it in with pen they left like an opening so it says uh, the first printing of the massacre is limited to 1000 copies of which Edition. This is number, and then they were at 688, and then it's signed by the author, John Vrooman. So, and it got good reviews. This is a cool little book, American Expansionism, 1783 to 1860 by Mark S. Joy. I looked it up on Amazon, got good reviews. It has, um, let's see, some different topics in here include early American Expansionism, the Louisiana Purchase, Oregon and Texas, The War with Mexico, and more. Looks good. This comes also in a small paperback, but I didn't see it. Um, Heart of the Country by Greg Matthews. It's a Western novel. This is like an oversized soft cover. It's got a little bit of like a like this old, like when it's old and it gets those colors on the side. I'm not sure what to call it. Kind of like a little bit stained, but no big deal. It looks worse probably in the video than it does in person. Um, this was something I, as I was leaving, I just needed to fill up the box, and I it actually got some good reviews. Um, I kind of just grabbed it. I thought it had an interesting cover. This is called The Swordswoman by Jessica Amanda Salmonson. There's also illustrations in the book. Just seemed kind of cool. Um, got some good reviews. Hard cover, excellent shape. The King Must Die by uh, by Mary Renault. I guess that's how you, I don't know if you pr pronounce it, Renault or Renault. Um, this is, of course, about uh, what is it, like the Greeks, maybe, or the Romans. I think it's the Greeks. That's what she wrote about. Let's see here. Athens. Reese. Hardcover. Nice copy. This I was very happy to find. This was at the book thing. This is uh, two novels by the same author. And they're both related, I believe, these books. Um, Don Wright, The Captives. And The Woodsman. This one, this I have in paperback. This I don't have at all. And I wanted it. And I've just been holding off spending money on the internet for it. And there it was, excellent shape at the book thing, and they were both there, both of them. So that was really cool. 
Okay. The Englishman's Boy by Guy Vanderhaeg, I guess is how you say his name. I have this in uh, paper, uh, soft cover. Paperback, I consider the small, like, pocket paperbacks. This is, uh, and soft cover would be like a larger trade size. And this is a hardcover. Excellent shape, free. And this is kind of interesting. I've seen it around and just never picked it up anywhere. I don't want to spend the money on it, but uh, it was free, so I got a copy. It's called Seven Rivers West by Edward Hoagland. I believe it takes place in the 1880s, and it's a guy searching for Bigfoot. At least that's part of the story, from what I understand. It seems kind of interesting and quirky. So, finally got it. Then I got here some, uh, some Jane Austen stuff. Pride and Prejudice, Spark Notes. So it's kind of like helpful, explanatory notes to the book when I read it. I haven't read it yet. Uh, I got the same thing for Emma. Jane Austen's Emma, but this is Max Notes, not Spark Notes. And this is a cute little book, uh, Jane Austen Pocket Giants by Caroline Sanderson. This is a biography, kind of like a mini biography. Is it just me or did the lighting change? It did, and then it just changed back. I don't know if you saw that in the video, but all of a sudden it got kind of orangey looking, and then it changed back. Um, Jane Austen, A Life Revealed. This is by Catherine Reef, biography, hardcover. I picked this up in a bookstore. I think it was probably around seven, eight, nine dollars. Um, this was from the book thing, this next one here. Excellent Shape, Encyclopedia of Mystery and Detection by Chris Steinbrunner and Otto Penzler. I need to put a, a clear broad art jacket on this. It's an excellent shape. And it's time for me to pause and get the next batch. Okay, let's continue. Now I'm down to the paperbacks. I have a, a bunch here. Okay, uh, The Buffalo Runners by Robert F. Jones. As you can see, it's about buffalo hunters or runners, as they're called in this for that book. Um, got good reviews. Two Road Together by Will Cook. I have this. This is um, this will make a good reading copy. This I bought probably for about a dollar or something like that. Now this is part of a trilogy, um, all by Will Cook. Until Day Breaks. This is a uh, Texas Texas Saga book one. Uh, this would be book two. It's called Until Shadows Fall. And this is book three, Until Darkness Disappears. There were just three books in the series as far as I could tell. And that's all of them, all in excellent shape. I did buy those in a used bookstore. That that was in a store that had like tons of paperbacks, like just thousands of paperbacks. Um, can't remember the name of that right now, but it was in Virginia. Will Henry, The Hunting of Tom Horn is the name of the book, but it's really just a bunch of short stories by Will Henry. And another Will Henry, Medicine Road. There's two books in here. Um, one is called Medicine Road, which is what they named it, but there's also another story in here called uh, Orphans of the North. This is something I kind of picked up as I was leaving the book thing. I just needed to fill up the box a little bit just so the books wouldn't move around. Um, had some space. So this is by uh, Craig Mills. It's called The Bane of Lord Caledon. Kind of like dragons and stuff and look kind of cool. Got good reviews. Um, the Guns of August, Barbara Tuchman. This is a book I always love to find because it's such a great book and it's nice to find a good copy. They had two of them. This is in the paperback store that I bought the Will Cook books, those, that trilogy. It's called The Last Hunt by Milton Lott. This is an excellent book if you haven't read it. 
Uh, it was also made into a movie. The movie's okay, but the book is where it's at. And uh, a picture of Milton Lott on the back. Special book, special writer. Uh, let's see. Muskets on the, Missis on the Mississippi. This is by Matthew Whitman Harding. It's like a frontier novel. I like those frontier novels. They're fun. If they're well written. Um, Anger in the Wind by Logan Foster. He wrote a novel about Apache Chief Victorio that was eh, it was okay. It wasn't great. A lot, lot of, you know, I think I had, I had a lot of issues with the book. But maybe if I knew nothing about the times, I might have liked it better. If I just read it as pure fiction. But uh, that wasn't the case. Um, Anger in the Wind. This guy in this book here, the main character, his mother is a Cheyenne. His father is a fur trader. Makes him a half-breed. And this is his story. And Rebels and Redcoats. This is a collection of eyewitness accounts of the American Revolution. It's an old paperback. George F. Shear and Hugh F. Rankin are the editors. Okay, uh, the Civil War. Selected readings from Mankind Magazine. I never heard of Mankind Magazine. This is edited by Raymond Friday Locke, L-O-C-K-E. He wrote a famous book about the Navajos. This is a novel about Gettysburg by author John Brick. It's an excellent shape, old book. This, I believe, not positive, I have to open, up, open it up to check, but I think I bought this at a regular used bookstore. Pretty sure I did. Um, I have another book or two by John Brick. Hard covers. This is my first paperback. Winds of Morning by H. L. Davis. It's a Western novel. Thought it had a cool cover. The Forbidden Ground by Neil H. Swanson. Excuse me while I organize here. Um, the Green Cockade by Frederick F. Vanderwater. Now, Vanderwater wrote a book, I think it was like 1933, it was published about George Custer. It was 33 or 34. It was the year after Elizabeth Custer died, which was 1932 or 1933, somewhere around there. So um, he's famous for that, but he was also a novelist, I guess. And here you go. This is, looks like it's a Revolutionary War Times novel. Stone Song by Win Blevins, which is short for Winfred. And this is a novel about Crazy Horse. Follow the River by James Alexander Tom, T H O M. This I have, but this will be my reading copy. It's a little bit sun faded on the front, but not bad. But the book's in excellent shape. And I could use that as a reading copy. The Restless Border by Dick Pierce. P-E-A-R-C-E. -E, old Western novel. Looks like uh, Apache's on the cover, maybe. I'm not sure. It's actually Comanche, it says on the back. Um, yeah, I'd say it. I shouldn't have said Apache's looking at the picture now, up close, more like Comanche's. Um, the Restless Border. Carrington by Michael Strait. This is a novel, it takes place in the mid-1860s, around the time of the Fetterman Massacre in Wyoming. I have this book. This is in excellent shape. This one I, I bought for a few dollars uh, in a bookstore in Virginia. The White Buffalo by Richard Sale. I have this book, but this I don't have like a really great copy. And this copy is really nice. It's in excellent condition. And this I bought in the same place. I bought Carrington, I believe. I think it was called 
this particular store, um, Daedalus Books, D-A-E-D-A-L-U-S, Daedalus, I think that's how you say it, books, and ooh, what town was I in? I'm not sure, it was it Charlottesville, it might have been Charlottesville, don't quote me on it, but it was in Virginia. Uh, the Brass Brigade by Frank Peer, by Frank Peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. Has a cool cover. I don't know if the book's very good, but the cover was nice. Will Henry, The Crossing. This is a novel. It's not short stories. It's a, a full book. The Outcasts of Polka Flat and Other Tales by Bret Hart. I might have all the stories in here in another book with a different title, but it's like, I guess they retitle and just put it out again. Um, but it was nice condition and I picked it up. I think this was free at the book thing. The Outlaw Josie Wales by Forrest Cotter, which of course was not his real name. Cool cover though, Clint Eastwood's on the cover and uh, I picked it up for that reason. I already have the book. I'm not really a fan, personally, of Forrest Carter, as he called himself. But uh, he actually did write some good novels. I have to say that they were pretty good. Too bad he, he personally was an asshole. But the books were pretty good. Long Knife, James Alexander Tom, who I said before uh, for the Follow the River book. This is another one. And this here is George Rogers Clark, famous frontiersman. Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, in no particular order. Okay, The Longest Day by Cornelius Ryan. This is a novel about D-Day. It's just missing a little part up here, but it was free at the book thing. And uh, it'd be a good reading copy for the train. Mary, more of a Mary Renault, uh, or Renault, The Last of the Line. This I don't have. This is a reading copy um, for this book. So if it's good, if I ever get to read it, I need to get a better copy. And here's The King Must Die, paperback. Again, Mary Renal. The Odyssey by uh, Homer, translated by W.H.D. Rouse, or Roos. I have this, but I don't have this cover. It was free. Look cool. This got good reviews. Um, A Passionate Prodigality by Guy Chapman. It's a novel about World War One. And Terry Johnston, Dance on the Wind. This is, uh, I think, the fourth book written in the Titus Base series. The, it's kind of like Star Wars in a way, where they did like the middle three, then they go back and do the earlier ones. Um, so this, this was the fourth book written, but it's actually the first in the series, if you were to read them chronologically. The Hostiles by Richard Ferber, F-E-R-B-E-R. -E -E Got a cool cover. I already have it. It's in great shape. And uh, I just wanted to get it because it had such a nice cover. Hopefully it has a good story. Of Human Bondage by W. Somerset Vaughn. I mean Mon. M-A-U-G-H-A-M. Mon. I mean, that's how you say it. Uh, again, of human bondage, nice little copy. I think that was a free book. Uh, Mark Twain, Roughing It. This would have been free. Yes, at the book thing. And this is, uh, it was an old book. I picked it up. I didn't know what it was, but it was in great shape. Um, it's called Do Not Disturb by Marvin H. Albert. He wrote some westerns, and uh, including one that had, was made into a movie with James Garner. Maybe it's called Duel at Diablo, possibly. 
But anyway, he he wrote some of those. So the name caught my eye. The book was in good shape, and it was this was also made into a movie. This has uh, let's see, they say who was in it: Doris Day and Rod Taylor. Do not disturb. I should look that up. And see if I can get the movie to watch. Uh, Thomas McGuane is the author. Nobody's Angel. This takes place in Montana. I guess in the 1900s. This just had a cool cover, and then I looked it up. It got good reviews, um, which I didn't know at the time. So luckily, it had good reviews. Called Widow's Web. Had a cool old gothic cover. It's by Ursula Curtis. Two S's at the end. And then I picked up two, these were free, John D. McDonald books. These are Travis McGee series. One is A Purple Place for Dying, and the other is Darker Than Amber. Uh, Dragon Whip by Anya Seaton. This was a free book and at the book thing. And I have the movie with Vincent Price. So I thought I'd just get the book. A few more to go. A lot of books. Uh, uh, let's see. Harold Robbins, The Dream Merchants. It's an old cool book. Looks like it's from the 1950s maybe. Sanditone, or Sanditon, by Jane Austen, and another lady. <laughs> I, there was a help with her to finish the book. Uh, I don't mean help back then, modern day help. Someone, I guess, finished the book for her. Uh, so, there you go, it was in great shape. I think this was free. This is something that I know, I remember, was free at the book thing. I always see this around, I never get it. Um, it was in excellent shape, Don Quixote, by, I guess you pronounce it Cervantes, Cervante. I've heard it, you know, quoted and people talk about the book, it's supposed to be a great book, so I thought I'd get it. This I have, um, looking far west, but it was, in, it was in great shape, I got another copy, edited by Frank Bergon and Zeese Peppa Nicholas, 16 pages of photographs. The Search for the American West in History, Myth, and Literature. <sighs> There's more. Not too many more. Okay. Uh, this is tiring for you. It's really tiring for me, and i got to put these away. Uh, F. Vanwick Mason is the author. It's called Our Valiant Few. This is a Civil War novel. Soldier Wolf by Bill Hotchkiss. This looks interesting. I remember getting this. I was in a small town outside, near Yorktown, I believe. And there was a used bookstore, and they had this for $2, which included tax. Um, this is a book about a, a half-breed Cheyenne, who, no, excuse me, a half-breed Cherokee, who goes west at some time, which I'm not sure it doesn't say on the back, to help uh, forge a peace between the government and the Cheyenne Indians. And it just, you know, I thought, what the hell, I'm on my trip having fun. I'll buy at least one thing from this store. So I picked this book. Hitch Hotchkiss is a good writer, though, so it should be a good book. This I picked up because I'm familiar with the area a little bit. It's called May Wine on Brooklyn Heights, by a novel by Robert Leary. It takes place in Brooklyn, New York. A Fine Madness by Elliot Baker. Supposed to be a good book. King of Spades by Frederick Manfred. I have this book. I think I even might have with this cover, but it's just like an excellent shape, so I thought I'd get it. Nice cover. Northwest Passage by Kenneth Roberts. I have a few of these. Uh, now I have another one. It was free. Great shape, so I took it. And Tom Jones by Henry Fielding. I probably should have looked for another one. Um, it's not bad. It's just you know, it's got some little marks on the front. But uh, that's the one I got. Tom Jones by Henry Fielding. This has good, good reviews. 
it's a famous book. Hopefully it's good. And the only other thing I picked up, well, let me pause it and go get it. I got some Civil War magazines, a handful of them. Um, these were free, so but that would be kind of cool. It's you know articles, go on a trip, bring a magazine. You don't have to get involved in bringing the book with you and getting in, like, into a long chapter. Just read a, an article. I like that. So that's it for this book haul. Um, there actually may be another two or three books that I got, but I'll probably get rid of them um, after looking them over and it really weren't much, of much interest. And uh, they're not handy to me to get right now. I'll just leave them where they are. I feel like getting up again. I'm a little bit tired. Okay, so uh, that's it for this video. That was hope you enjoyed it. That was, I think, over 100 books. Um, or especially, well, close to it, the magazines would put it over 100 probably. That was probably just around, like, maybe in the 90s, I think. So uh, now I'm just blabbing. It's time to go. I'm tired. Bye. It's Saturday, August 25th. And a little small update of books this week that I picked up at Strand. So first, I found Crazy Horse by Marie Sandos, the soft cover edition. It was a dollar. Uh, introduction by Vine Deloria Jr. And I don't have, I don't believe that I have this with the introduction by Deloria. So I figured for that, worth a dollar. Then I picked up Mr. Darcy Takes a Wife, which is uh, Pride and Prejudice, kind of like part two. Um, it's written by Linda... Berdal, B E R D O L L. Thick book, nice condition, one dollar. Maybe I'll get to read it someday. I don't know. Then uh, this was the last book that I found this week. I think I found it on Thursday. Um, this is William Henry Jackson, and the transformation of the American landscape. And it's a big soft cover book. There's pictures of Native Americans in here. Not too many, but some. Um, it's by Peter B. Hales, H-A-L-E-S. Got a good review online. And uh, for a dollar, <laughs> definitely worth a dollar. Today we went to see Wicked, the play in Manhattan. And I did not like it. My wife and son liked it. I thought it was boring. The songs were just... Ugh, uh, just nothing about it really interested me. On top of which, there was a guy sitting in front of me who was kind of tall with a big head, and I had a hard time seeing. I like lean over the whole show, but it, it wasn't even the show. Just wasn't special to me. I don't know what the big deal is about it. But then we went bowling afterwards. That was fun. Okay, so that's it for this little update. Take care. It's Friday, August thirty first, and I'm happy because it's. Now, 10 months to retirement, starting tomorrow, obviously September 1st, counting down the final 10 months to retirement. I started these videos, I think it was February, about three years ago. So, it's been a, been a long time coming, down to the last 10. Well, tomorrow, starting tomorrow, I'll be down to the last 10. And tomorrow, I'll be doing a video, because we're going to two bookstores, one in... Poughkeepsie and one in Middletown, New York, uh, used bookstores attached to libraries. So I always love going to those. They're inexpensive and you can find some great books. So what did I get this week at Strand? This was outside. It's a little bit faded and worn, but I, want, I wanted to get it. It was just 50 cents. Uh, the King's Messenger by Samuel Edwards. It's like an historical fiction uh, frontier, well, eastern frontier romance, Indians kind of thing. I don't know. I like that kind of stuff. If I ever get to read it, so if I find a better copy, I'll get it and save that one and read this one. Then, uh, $2. This is a brand new book. It didn't have a dust jacket. Uh, Godless Citizens in a Godly Republic. And it's written by R. Lawrence Moore and Isaac Kramnik. And it's brand new, 2018 book. Godless Citizens in a Godly Republic. $2 outside Strand. Hopefully it's a good book. Days Without End it's by Sebastian Barry. This is uh, Western fiction. It takes place during the Civil War or after the Civil War and during the Indian Wars. 
Um, so probably 1860s, 70s, somewhere in there. Outside, $2, brand new. And then, this book I was happy to find. I like these kind of books. This is called The Boisterous Sea of Liberty. It's a documentary history of America from discovery through the Civil War. And it's uh, compiled by David Brian Davis and Stephen Mintz. It's missing a little piece up here. It was outside for $2. I put a broad art clear sleeve on it. Um, I don't mind him, you know. Not such a big deal. Just a little spot. The two dollars, hey, it's worth it. The book itself is like brand new. That might have been why it was outside for two dollars, but I'm okay with it. If I find a better copy, very very cheap, maybe I get it uh, just for the dust jacket. But it's really not a big deal. Um, Thomas, B oh, this book I got at the book thing for free, and I, it didn't make it into my book thing video, which was. Uh, Appeared earlier in this video. It's uh, called High Towers by Thomas B. Costain. And this is uh, about three French brothers in North America, I guess in the, let's see, in the 1600s. Forging an empire. Uh, it was free. And this, I don't think I showed this earlier. I got this about a week ago. Um, more or less about a week ago, maybe 10 days ago. I lost track. Maybe two weeks ago. Now I'm, now I'm going back further in time. But not too long ago, within the last two weeks, uh, Robert Griffin, the, the historical art of Robert Griffin. And this is an amazing journey, text by Michael Galban, forward by David L. Preston. It's volume three. I have the first two volumes. You can see he's a very good artist. Um, I might have shown this in a previous video. I don't remember, so there you go again. Again, it's now the end of August, and all I have left to do for this video is to go over what movies I watched and what books I read, so I'll be right back. Okay, so what movies did I watch this month? In, in order of uh, from first to last, starting on August 1st, I watched Crazy Heart with Jeff Bridges. I gave that a four and a half out of five stars. Uh, a movie called First Comes Like with Nicole Brandon and some people I don't know who they are. Gave two and a half stars. Run Fat Boy Run with Simon Pegg. I like Simon Pegg. That movie also had Hank, Hank Azaria. Um, I gave that three and a quarter stars. It was good. You know, I, like, I like Simon Pegg, but some of it was just kind of silly, I guess. Uh, three and a quarter. Uh, the Rebound. Catherine Zeta-Jones and some other people they don't really know. Uh, Sam Robards, John Schneider had a small part. I gave that two and a half stars. That was The Rebound. Then there's a movie called And Over or Andover. I think it's like a play on words. Um, with Jonathan Silverman, Richard Kind. Uh, I gave that two and a half stars. September, Diane West, Mia Farrow. Uh, it's a Woody Allen movie from 1987. I gave two and a half stars. It got some good reviews online, but I just thought it was kind of like slow and and uh, uh, what's it claustrophobic. Um, Dane, Joan Blondell, Dick Powell, uh, three stars. That's a 1934 movie. I met him in Paris. Claudette Colbert, uh, Melvin Douglas, Robert Young from 1937. I gave three stars. Agora, Rachel Wise, and uh, some people I'm not really familiar with. Uh, four stars from 2009. That was four stars. Agora, The Kissing Booth. It was a silly movie. I didn't even. I don't have a rating here. Uh, I probably deleted it also. Um, Down with Love. Renee Zellweger, David Hyde Pierce, Ewan McGregor. I gave four stars. That's from 2003. Down with Love. Will and Liz. I gave four stars. That has Nathan Wilson, Christine Tucker. People I never heard of. That's from 2018. Four stars. Okay, next on my list is the movie It. The Terror from Beyond Space. This is from 1958. Terrible movie. Just even though 1958 and it's not like, you know, it should be like some kind of classic horror movie. Gave it a two. I did not like that movie. I just noticed my face is like really in close to the camera. Should I sit back? Um... 
All I Want, Melissa Center, uh, Rebecca Larson, Jonathan Chase, some others, 2017, doesn't really matter who's in the movie, I gave it a 1, I did not like that movie, uh, that was All I Want, then Big Nothing with David Schwimmer, Simon Pegg, um, that wasn't bad at all, I like that, 2006 that came out, I gave it 4 stars, picture this, this was a bad movie for me to watch, Ashley Tisdale, I don't even know why I watched it. 2009 movie. One star. The Sure Thing. John Cusack, Anthony Edwards, Tim Robbins, Daphne Zuniga. Uh, 1985 movie. Gave that four stars. Uh, that was The Sure Thing. Next, The World's End with Simon Pegg I gave, and Eddie Marsan, Marsan. From 2013, I gave that three and a half stars. Constantine, Keanu Reeves, Rachel Weitz, you think it would be a good movie, but I did not think so. One star, that's from 2005, that was, I did not like that movie. Uh, my one and only, Renee Zellweger, Logan Lerman, Kevin Bacon, uh, Eric McCormick, uh, 2009 movie, I gave that five stars, called my one and only. Uh, the Girl with Green Eyes. Peter Finch, Rita Tushingham, Lynn Redgrave from 1964. That's somewhere between a three and a half and a four. So we'll just say 3.75. Uh, Women Walks Ahead. That was a Western that came out uh, back in 2017 with Jessica Chastain, uh, Chasky Spencer, and Sam Rockwell. And I wanted to like it. It's about Sitting Bull and a white woman named Catherine Weldon, which wasn't her real name, uh, but that was the name she went by. I wanted to like this movie. I love history. I love Sitting Bull. This was a one-star movie. Horrible, horrible, horrible movie. Ugh, just horrible movie. Um, could not stand that movie. You just The people who were in that movie were not done any favors by the people... Uh, by the script, let's say. The act, I mean, the actors are actors, they're good, but just couldn't pull this off. This was just a bad script, bad movie. Woman Walks Ahead. Uh, Sunset Boulevard, that's part of my 15 movie countdown. Every month I watch one classic movie that I love, from the that I've watched already, and uh, this month was Sunset Boulevard. Five stars. Great, great movie. Okay, books that I read this month. What did I read? Well, first of all, we went, we went on vacation to Virginia. And while in Virginia, I didn't bring a book. I just brought like some uh, papers I printed out, uh, like articles, things like that. So I'm not going to list that here. But what books did I read? I read Destry Rides Again by Max Brand. I'd give that three and a half out of five stars. I read Savannah by Janice Hult Giles. I gave that three stars. And I'm reading right now, I'm like halfway through about uh, a Farewell to Alms by Ernest Hemingway. And I'd give that about a three so far, three out of five. It's not bad, you know, it's a little bit quirky the writing. Um, not sure why he's considered such a famous writer, at least, you know, maybe this book ends great, I don't, I don't know. Um, it's good, but it's, it's a little bit weird also, it's the, way the, the way the writing is. Um, Maybe that's what's supposed to make him great. I don't know. I'm not, it's my first Hemingway book. Um, so farewell to Oms. I'm giving three stars so far. That's it for the end of August. Stay tuned for September.